For those who may not know me, I'm Sergeant Anna Gray with the Evansville Police Department. Last night we had an officer involved shooting, which was October 19th. Around 11 p.m., Evansville police officers were dispatched to the area of Stinson Avenue and James Avenue to assist Indiana State Police for a possible kidnapping and murder. Officers from multiple agencies, including EPD, arrived on scene and found out the incident actually occurred at 1801 Stinson Avenue. The reporter was still on scene and told officers that she went to the residence to visit with Heidi Carter. While she was inside the residence, she saw a dead body and ran out of the home to get help. Officers located 36-year-old Heidi Carter outside of the home near a vehicle. She told officers that there were several people still inside the home. Officers also located a gun on Carter. Officers surrounded the home and called out other residents with a loud verbal command, also using a loudspeaker. A male resident walked out of the home, complied with officers, and told officers that there were other individuals still inside, including his two teenage children. He communicated with them by telephone and instructed them to stay upstairs. It was then communicated to all officers on scene that the children were upstairs. We are now going to play a video. This is actually a dash, uh, dash camera from one of our squad cars. Uh, the audio is not very good, but you're going to be able to see uh, clear, a better clear uh, video on this. This is actually going to be the first individual that officers were calling out of the residence. And this is actually the front of the entrance. This is the front door, or front of the residence. Again, the audio is not great. Keep in mind that that is from inside the squad car, and the officers are standing outside of the squad car as they're uh, communicating with this individual. Um, also, you can see he complied. At one time, it looks like you can see a shadow kind of goes down on the ground. Uh, he has what appears to be a bottle in his hand, and officers told him to put it down. He puts it down and continues to comply with officers. So he was, uh, he was detained without any incident. Over the next four minutes, officers continued to yell commands at another male that they could see just inside the doorway. After officers gave numerous loud verbal commands, the male disregarded their commands and rushed out of the front door in an aggressive manner. He was holding an object in his hand that he pointed at officers. Officers believed this object was a, was a gun and several officers fired at the suspect to stop the perceived threat. We are now going to show body camera footage from one of the officers who was on scene. Um, keep in mind, this is uh, it's not as close as the dash cam. It's a little further away, but the audio is going to be way better on this. Come on now! Hands up! Walk out there! <laughs> 
So this perspective is from the officer, again, his body camera. Um, earlier when you saw the dash camera, um, this officer is actually just to the right. So this is a little bit different perspective. We're going to go back to the dash camera from the squad car that we saw earlier, and we're going to um, watch it from the perspective of, of the officers who are standing over here by the squad car. Again, the audio is not going to be as good um, because uh, keep in mind this is inside the car. And again, this is real time. We're not slowing this down just yet, okay? Again, that was real time. We're actually, we took some still images to give you a better idea of the officer's perspective of what they were seeing. This is the individual in the doorway here. If you notice this right here, these are his arms extended out. Okay? This object right here, that is what he has in his hand. Again, coming out of the doorway, arms are raised. And keep in mind, this entire time, officers are giving multiple, clear, loud, verbal commands. Again, this is what an officer perceives right here. This is what we call, this is a standard um, shooter stance. The individual is facing officers. Again, keep in mind, even though this is the dash camera right here recording this, there are officers over here by this vehicle. But earlier when we saw the officer body camera footage, this officer is standing over here. So he is actually, when he comes out, he's actually pointing at the officers who are over here on this side. And what appears to be a, a gun in his hand as he's coming out the door. Once officers were able to determine that the suspect was no longer a threat, they moved him behind cover to render aid and allowed other officers to safely clear the home. The suspect was pronounced dead on scene. Once officers cleared the home, the two juveniles were located upstairs and were unharmed. They were safely taken out of the home. Officers located an adult female victim who had been tied up, shackled, and had visible injuries. She was taken to a local hospital for treatment. Detectives obtained a signed search warrant for the home. Another individual was located inside the residence, but unfortunately was deceased and beyond help. The manner of death appeared suspicious and gruesome. He had been restrained, 
duct taped, beaten, and strangled. The identity of the victim and the manner of death will be released by the Vandenberg County Coroner's Office at a later time. Detectives learned that the male suspect, along with Heidi Carter, murdered the individual who was found deceased inside the residence. They also tied and shackled the female victim while the male suspect raped her multiple times throughout the day on, uh, from October 19th through October 20th. Heidi Carter was arrested and booked into the Vandenberg County Confinement Center for the following charges. Murder, two counts of intimidation with a weapon, rape, two counts of felony criminal confinement, assisting a criminal, carrying a handgun without a license, and abuse of a corpse. After reviewing witness statements, body camera footage, and other video footage, we believe that all officers from the Evansville Police Department, Vandenberg County Sheriff's Office, and Indiana State Police relied on their training and did an exceptional job under extremely stressful circumstances. And this appears to be a suicide by a cop situation.